This car differs from other cars in many features. One point eight five million dollars. Hey everybody, it's Mike Tucker and Sean Tucker from Preston Tucker Speed Shop. We are at the AACA Museum today, easily the, the center of the Tucker universe. This place has it all as it relates to Tucker. They've got cars, they've got engines, they've got the original test chassis, tons of parts, the original blueprints, just an amazing collection of, of Tucker items that we're going to take a look at today. So the museum itself is in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, and was basically the whole the whole display was made possible by one kind of prolific Tucker collector named David Kamek. So Dave bought his first Tucker in 1972. Um, that would be Tucker number 22, and subsequently bought two more. So he bought Tucker number one and Tucker number 26. In addition to those cars, he bought more than 10 Tucker engines. He uh, secured all of the blueprints for the Tucker car all the doc all kinds of crazy documents just everything you can imagine related to tucker dave was able to get his hands on and one thing when when he was alive um, he did pass away in 2013 he was willing to show anybody his his collection and he was really famous for that and in order to carry on his legacy he donated everything here so that uh, so that everybody can kind of you know come come see the canva collection and uh participate in, in the history of tucker so kudos to dave so before we head into the exhibit, I just want to mention some of the Tucker merchandise that we're carrying now. Sean is wearing our blue torpedo shirt. I'm wearing one of our new hooded sweatshirts. This is a silver and maroon design. If anybody's interested in Tucker merchandise, visit our website at tuckercorporation.com and click on store. There's shirts, hats, and several other items that we've, we've got available if, if, if you're interested in representing the, the Tucker brand. So we're going to head on in here. Um, the first thing that we're going to kind of walk by here is Tucker engine number one. Um, this is literally the first Tucker engine uh, we're going to, the first Tucker engine that was uh, the helicopter that made it to the car. We're going to spend a whole video probably on, on the evolution of Tucker engines, so we'll talk a little more about this one later. Um, as we move into the rest of the exhibit, you can get kind of an idea of just how expansive this collection is. So you can see behind me we've got Tucker number one in the far corner there. This is Tucker number 26. The uh, kind of redder one you see here is actually a Tucker movie car. It's made out of fiberglass. And then the silver car behind me is Tucker number 22. The other thing that you can see is all kinds of other Tucker things, right? So we've got Tucker suspensions. This is out of Tucker number 46. You've got, uh, this is from Tucker number 23, but just so that you can kind of see the evolution of how things happen and, and what they looked like, it's, it's a, you can't really see this stuff anywhere else. Right, and, and, and over time we're gonna try to make videos of each of the little segments of, of items we've got here so that everyone that isn't able to visit uh, gets to see some of this amazing collection. So make sure you stay tuned for some of those future videos on the individual cars and, and items like that. So uh, we're gonna spend most of our time today on the Tucker test chassis, which is over here in the corner. Um, it's kind of amazing that this even still exists. So this is actually Tucker test chassis number one. So this, there, there is, by the way, more than one test chassis. There's a subsequent they, one they used for the Tucker, uh, Tucker Matic that had a different powertrain. This one has the original 589 cubic inch engine that was being designed by a gentleman named Ben Parsons for, for Tucker. So this thing is massive. Um, it's a flat six, as you can kind of see here, but it's, uh, it's huge. And the placement of this in the chassis was done very deliberately. So while it is you know, a gigantic engine, it sits way down into the chassis, and that's on purpose to get the center of gravity of the powertrain as low as possible. Um, some of the technologies that are on this, it's uh, number one, it's a dry sump oil system. There's an oil tank up here to um, provide lubrication. The other probably most interesting thing about this is you can see all these lines and things running everywhere, but this engine does not have a camshaft. So there's an oil distributor pump on the side over there that basically provides oil pressure to open and close the valves. So you can see on the top of the jug here, you've got actuators that are run off oil pressure that then open and close the valves. And one of the benefits of this engine being so large is it didn't spin very fast. So the actual mechanical actuation of these could actually take place. Um, there's also no cylinder heads here. So the jug and the cylinder and all that stuff is cast in one piece. And that was done on purpose to eliminate the head gasket. So it's all kind of one, one design and the, you know, the idea there being to remove failure points. The original design for this engine would have 
been fuel injection. So this is kind of a later iteration where they switched it to carburetors, but you would have had individual mechanical fuel injection manifolds here on, on the original setup. We believe that they made between four and six of these engines. We've had at least, uh, we've accounted for at least four of the cast sets of castings. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing. They, they did abandon this design because it just, they just didn't have time to get it developed. But uh, from, from a drivetrain standpoint, it's also pretty interesting. You don't see a transmission here. There are torque converters on both sides of the engine that drive the wheel, you know, drive the, the wheel directly. And again, the idea there's simplicity. So it eliminated the entire transmission, less weight, um, and, and it would allow uh, direct drive directly to, to the wheels. So if you look back here, this, this isn't the battery that was in the original configuration, but one of the stories we've always heard about uh, the, the opening for Tucker back in, in June of 47, this engine took an amazing amount of power to start. And part of that was because you had compression in every cylinder when you were starting it. So they had to use 24 volts of power to get this thing going and, and it was incredibly loud. So the, the story we've heard is that the band that was playing at the opening, Preston asked them to play extra loud so that as this thing was roaring through the crowd in the plant that, that people uh, wouldn't notice how loud that it was. So it's one of the funny stories from back then. Um, looking down at some of the other items here, you see this cooling system set up. So the original design, and obviously it wouldn't have run on top of the frame, but had the cooling system running all the way to the front of the vehicle and ending up at these radiators here. Uh, so, so while, well, you know, theoretically that would work, it was a lot of, lot of system and a lot of things that could have potentially been a problem, particularly back in 1948 with the poor roads and, and things that were uh, part of back then. So ultimately they, they scrapped this design and, and had the radiator in the back. One of the other things you can see a lot better in the front suspension is these disc brakes. So the original design was to have Kinmont disc brakes at each wheel, and you can see that in there. They're incredibly rare uh, these days. Tucker had planned on using them. Uh, didn't end up panning out, but it's uh, one of the neat features of this test chassis. And then right next to that, you can see the 713 tire. Now, Preston was one of the first people that was intending to use tubeless tires before the Tucker and before uh, what ultimately used it the first time. Every tire had tubes in it. So one of Preston's ideas was having a tubeless tire. They ended up leaving the factory with tubes in them, but uh, certainly it was an idea at the time. You'll also notice that the sidewall of this tire is relatively tall, and part of that was because they wanted to use the tire also as part of the suspension. So the, the, the high sidewall and the 13-inch wheel, uh, which were originally designed to be magnesium, these are not, but that was the idea, would help the suspension um, function even, even more uh, properly. Uh, looking at these arms here, and Sean, you you had said uh, one of the what was the what was the material that uh, it's, they, it's, these it's were some used? sort of copper uh, red you know red metal based alloy. So they were um, I I forget if they were made of aluminum for the original showing of the tin goose, but something was wrong with the material, and they actually collapsed. You can tell these ones are I think I believe it's beryllium copper. You can tell by the uh, kind of corrosion on the one there on the on the left that these are certainly a red metal because that's, uh, you know, that's, that's what you'd see from, for corrosion on red metal. The other part of the suspension that uh, Mike, I don't know if he touched on yet, but the, these are, this is kind of the original torso, or torso elastic iteration. So Tucker used a rubber suspension rather than springs and shocks. So the kind of interesting thing about rubber is that, you know, you can use it as, as a spring and torsion. It also has a dampening effect. So these ones kind of bolt to the upper arm or control arm here and as the suspension is moving up and down they go into torsion and that's actually what provides your suspension function so it's uh even on this version didn't work quite like they wanted it and even on the later version that made it to the cars in multiple iterations uh, they never really got it quite right the concept was great but uh needed a little more work so so that's, uh, that's the test chassis, and, and uh, we're going to conclude this video with that. We, we will be shooting a lot of other items here at the AACA, AACA, like I said, with the individual cars and things like that, so stay tuned. If you want to look, look us up on social media, we're at Preston Tucker LLC on Facebook. 
Preston Tucker Speed Shop, obviously, on YouTube. Um, and I mentioned before, we've got uh, TuckerCorporation.com as our website where you can buy merchandise and other things as well. So thank you for watching today and stay tuned for our next video on the AACA Museum's awesome Tucker exhibit.